Hello everyone. Welcome to the YouTube channel of Functional Safety First. In this video, we are going to discuss a question that many of you have asked us via mail. So many that we decided to do a video on it. And this question is, how do I know if I have sufficiently verified my software SEOOC? We will answer this question with two videos. In this video, which is the first part, we will cover what is a software SEOOC and what are the complexities surrounding a software SEOOC. In the second video, we will go deeper into the verification aspect and give you specific suggestions on how to best verify your SEOOC. So firstly, let's recap what is an SEOOC, what is a software SEOOC and share some examples with you. An SEOOC, called in simple terms as SEOC, is a safety element that is developed as SL without even knowing what are the actual safety goals or what is the system in which this element is going to be used. If you're interested to understand deeper on safety element or SEOC, please read the blog article that is linked in the description box below. A software SEOC is a software component that is developed as SL without the context of the safety goals. There are several examples of software SEOCs. For example, a software driver for a micro peripheral such as an ADC or PWM or a driver for any special IC such as an LED driver, PMIC, serializer can be developed as software SEOCs because their functionality stays the same no matter what the safety goals of that system are. Of course, depending upon the safety goal, safe state or FTTI, you may configure the driver differently, but the principal functionality of the driver itself does not change. Another example of software SEOCs is the operating system. All the SL certified operating systems that are available in the market today are developed as SEOCs, such as QNX OS, Integrity, Safe RTOS, etc. Other examples of software SEOCs include middleware components or libraries such as a math CRC library, AutoSAR Watchdog Manager, or even application software components for a specific functionality can be developed as SEOC. Take a warning manager, for example, that manages all the warnings of the system and an adaptive cruise control function in an EDAS system. The key thing to take away from this picture here is that any software component, no matter where it is placed in the software architecture, be it a driver, be it a middleware, library, or an application component, can be developed as a SEOC. Also, a software SEOC can be just one software component or it can be several software components, such as a BSW stack. Now that we know what a software SEOC is, let us understand what is the external world of a software SEOC. The hardware in which the software SEOC runs is obviously outside its scope. This includes the micro in which the software will run and other aspects of the hardware architecture that can influence the SEOC. Second is the OS. Again, uh, I'm assuming here that the OS itself is not the SEOC, just for ease of explanation. Third, the rest of the software architecture or software components that are available in the system and uses the software SEOC's APIs or services are outside its scope. Number four, the compiler that is chosen to compile the SEOC. Now, let's understand the complexity of this external world with an example. Let's take a CRC library as an example of our SEOC. The purpose of this library is to calculate CRCs over a number of data bytes. The component supports various types of CRC algorithms, such as an 8-bit, 16-bit, 32-bit, and 64-bit calculation. Given the job of this component is so generic, it may be used for a wide variety of purposes, such as for calculating CRC to protect a memory region or to add redundancy for a data communication. The CRC library may be assumed to be used in various microcontrollers, such as Infineon, TI, NXP, and Qualcomm, and probably even more micros. It may be assumed to run in various operating systems, such as QNX, Integrity, and AutoSAR OS. It may as well be assumed to run in layered architecture models as well as client-server architecture models. And lastly, it may be assumed to be built using GHS compiler and IAR compiler and probably even more compilers. With the sheer complexity of this external world of the SEOC, making sure that the software SEOC works perfectly fine in any of these conditions is not an easy job, but it's achievable. So stay tuned for the second part of this video. Thank you for watching. 
And if you have any questions on whatever we discussed so far, please feel free to reach out to us at autofunctionalsafety at gmail.com or leave a comment below. Thank you for watching.